As I was pondering what to say in this introduction, I realized the almost obvious fact that nothing I could ever say could come close to covering the brilliance, poise, wittiness, and humility that is Jasmine Wong. Although I spent most of my French career staring at the back of her massive bun and, doodle, and doodles that are worthy of the most prestigious art galleries, I have to say the thing that has stuck the most with me about Jasmine is that she is the most intentional person I have ever had the pleasure of calling my friend. She is intentional in her conversations, she is intentional in her kindness, and she is intentional in her listening. I simply cannot come close to imagining the wisdom she has to bestow upon us, so listen up to the one and only Jasmine Ali Wong. There is always something to do. There are hungry people to feed, naked people to clothe, sick people to comfort and make well. There is always something to do, but on this particular Tuesday night, here I sit, legs splayed, back slouched, head lowered, eyes sifting through the endless trashy abyss of BuzzFeed, clicking yes instead of no, picking a peach for my favorite fruit, choosing red as my favorite color, all for the algorithm to tell me within a short paragraph that I will never marry. <laughs> Unexpected. So I refresh the page, click no instead of yes, pick an orange for my favorite fruit, choose blue as my color, and see within 0.2 seconds that I will marry at age 35. Displeased with my fortune, I set off on Twitter, then onto YouTube to watch a video on how the TV show Sherlock, a show I've never watched before, cinematically frames thought. I decide this isn't suitable and switch to a video of a baby hippo learning how to walk for the first time. An hour passes by. My activeness is summarized within a small 11 inch by 11 inch laptop and the non-physical digital world of the internet. I look down at my desk and follow each line of wood grain towards the pile of binders standing by, waiting with loads of paperwork to be finished. There's calculus, there's English, there are the emails I need to return, there are the Tatler articles I need to edit, and there are, most dreaded of all, the piles and piles of late stat quizzes I refuse to begin. <laughs> So with every quarter, the struggle of school, this institution for which my whole life is coincidentally centered around for seven hours a day, inevitably reaches a peak. It is impossible to work, run, shower, eat dinner, watch YouTube videos, complete homework, and still get at least five hours of sleep. Quite obviously, it is impossible. But like all things of habit, I keep going. I keep going and going, occasionally falling asleep at my desk with the lights still turned on, the music still playing from my headphones. But the one thing I consciously, purposefully do alongside the hungry people to feed, the naked people to clothe, the sick people to comfort and make well, the one thing I do every day of the week is to go outside in the cool night, look up at the dark blanket of the sky, and spot the single pattern of stars that always appear in the back pocket of my driveway. Those pattern of stars are an asterism, and an asterism a pattern of stars. But this particular asterism, this asterism which will always be seen from the back pocket of my driveway, is the only asterism I know. In spite of all the flashy constellations in the sky, I can only recognize a select few, the Little Dipper and the Big Dipper, and even then I get them confused. But in this whole busy hubbub, the asterism remains constant. Even around my disorganized flurry, the three stars making up this asterism form a straight line evenly spaced apart. And those three stars, in their order and in their equanimity, remind me once again why those stat quizzes aren't as irrelevant as they seem to be, and why I even bothered to take calculus in the first place. Among a variety of other names, I have learned that these three stars belonging to my backyard are known as the Three Sisters. They dot the sky and twinkle and do their star thing, and I stand below with the concrete grazing my bare feet, not quite struggling to comprehend calculus, much less the universe, but quietly reminding myself that the three sisters are an asterism and a part of the constellation called Orion the Hunter. The whole story originates from a Greek myth, and essentially the constellation is the outline of a guy shooting a bow and arrow. But each time I register the three sisters as the belt of Orion, Mentally, in my mind, I cross out the word Orion, write in Mr. Miller, 
And instead of some guy with the bow and arrow, I picture ornery, old Mr. Oren C. Miller. You middle schoolers most likely knew Mrs. Miller from choir, or from your times of singing for 100 days of school, or from the Christmas pageant. I wasn't lucky enough to come to St. Mary's in time for Mrs. Miller, but I did get to have Mr. Miller as a teacher. And I can tell you, in spite of all my terrible habits of procrastination, Mr. Miller always scared us just right. <laughs> to the point where the entire pre-Cal BC class, including me, would work our hardest. There are plenty of take-home tests smothered in red, but there are also days when he'd tell us stories about his two dogs, Chili Bear and Princess Greybeard, or show us old music by Jackie DeShannon and Johnny Cash. Each word he spoke was uttered carefully and purposefully, wisdom he'd impart on a whim or on a story day. Cruises are for old people, he'd tell us. Once my student, always my student, he'd say. During the beginning of class, we'd talk, we'd make a ruckus and be our own obnoxious selves. But as Mr. Miller moved from his chair to the, in the back and began walking to the front of the classroom, we'd immediately turn quiet. Mr. Miller died before our class could finish our year of BC pre-calculus together, before you all could get a chance to have a class with him. All the things I have to say won't make a blip in the spectrum of infinity, nor in the world, and not even in our puny state of Tennessee. But here's my final shout to St. Mary's, my final battle cry before I disappear. See those three lined stars. They're entirely visible in Memphis on a clear night out. See them. Count them. Say to yourself, this is Orin's belt. Not Orion, but Orin. Orin's belt. Because at the end of the day, there is always something to do. So catch sight of those three line stars. Allow yourself one release of breath that carries all the relief you can possibly muster in the hopes that perhaps, just perhaps, it will lift someone. And so it shall go. We won't remember everyone, but we do remember some, and that's enough because the stars remind us. They do their star thing, and we do our human thing. And up there, emblazoned across the sky, stands ornery old Mr. Orrin C. Miller. And that is enough.